Casey. And I'm Corey. And we are the Wright Brothers. I'd like to welcome you to our March podcast, and we are here today to talk to you about our very special computer buying guide. That's right. Now, in March, we thought no better place to bring you our podcast than live from Dublin, Ireland, in light of St. Paddy's Day. So, if we're slurring our words a little bit, it might be because we've had one too many Guinness at the local pub. <laughs> it's true. You haven't had a Guinness until you've had it at an Irish pub. <laughs> So uh, we thought that we'd bring you a computer buying guide because we're always getting questions from our clients as far as what to look for when buying a computer. And it's a, it's a difficult answer because there is no bottled answer that we can give because things are changing so much and, and the different uses as well. No, you're absolutely right. I mean, just a, a good example of that is just you think about a couple of years ago and people were just starting to think about the idea of watching DVDs on their computers and laptops. And now people are fully into editing their DVDs and posting DVDs on the internet. I mean, it has become a completely different game. And of course, you need a completely different computer to do that. That's right. So with all of the new technologies and new updates coming, uh, and also with your uses of your computer, changing we thought that we'd create a computer buying guide that would help that would help you guys walk through the process whether you're looking to buy a laptop or a desktop uh, so with that let's dive into our computer buying guide all right core why don't you kick us off all right well the first thing that we want to talk to you guys about are the specs of your new computer now, there's three main specs that you want to look for when buying a new computer the first one being the processor or the CPU right now I think the best way to think about the processor is essentially the brain of your computer so the bigger, better brain you have, the smarter your computer is going to be. Uh, what would you say the industry standard is right now on processors? Uh, well, right now Intel pretty much has a stranglehold on the whole industry, controlling about 80 to 90 percent of the processors in computers right now. And the standard for Intel being uh, the Core Duo chip. So I'd recommend the Intel Core Duo chip um, for, is the best chip out there on the market right now. Now the second thing that you want to consider uh, when, when buying a computer is the memory or the RAM of your computer. Yeah, now RAM, I think the best way to think about this is it will be responsible for how fast your computer runs. So this is kind of interesting. A lot of times we'll have clients come up to us, and Corey knows, we'll have clients come up to us and they'll say, you know, our computer's running so slow, we need to get a new computer. That's why we need a com two computers running too slow. And I'll say to them, you know, I got good news for you. That's not the problem. Your problem is the RAM, and RAM is a very inexpensive and very easy upgrade. Basically, costs 80 to 150 bucks. Take it down to your local CompUSA. They'll pop a new RAM chip in there, and that thing will run uh, two to three times as fast in some instances. So, a lot of times, if you find yourself sitting at home saying my computer's too slow, that's why I need a new one. Maybe you just need a new RAM chip. Uh, but when you're talking about buying a computer, how much RAM should you be looking for? Uh, well, there's really three levels of RAM in most computers nowadays. You have 512 megabytes, one gigabyte, and two gigabytes of RAM. I would say that two gigabytes is what you'd want to shoot for. It's going to make for the easiest and best computing experience. But don't drop anywhere below the one gigabyte uh, range. Otherwise, it will become very uh, slow and somewhat frustrating in the computing experience. So anywhere between one to two gigabytes. Now, the last thing we want to talk to you guys about is the storage of your computer. Yeah, now storage is real simple. It's exactly what it sounds like. It is storage. <laughs> so basically it means uh, whether it be your standard word processing units or, or processing files or your standard uh, image files or just video files, the more storage you get, the more you're going to be able to keep on your computer. Uh, how much storage should you be looking for right now? Uh, well, it's kind of like this. I mean, you are kind of at about a 60 gigabytes of storage. I'm probably somewhere more about 120 gigabytes of storage. Uh, no, but realistically, uh, computers nowadays have so much storage, it's almost ridiculous. Um, laptops are going to start anywhere around 60 and go up to about 120, 140 gigabytes of storage. Desktops, you're looking at anywhere between about 120 and 200 gigabytes of storage. Um, for the average consumer, it's more than you could ever dream up to hold all the, uh, the uh, photos, pictures, music, videos, files, uh, and, pro and uh, programs that you could ever want. So not a huge consideration, but look somewhere between the 80 and up range, 80 gigabyte and up range for your storage. All right, sounds good. So let's do a real quick recap. Basically, for processors, you want to be looking for an Intel Core Duo processor. Probably shouldn't deviate too much from that. For the RAM, you want to be talking about anywhere within the one gigabyte on the low end to two gigabytes on the high end uh, for the RAM or the memory. And then when you're talking about storage, storage you should be trying to get anywhere about 80 gigabytes to 100 gigabytes, but generally that's not going to be too difficult because that's uh, pretty much industry standard. So let's dive into peripherals. All right. All right, now your computer is going to come with more than just the box with the specs that we had just talked about. It's also going to come with peripherals, things such as a monitor and speakers, keyboard, mouse printers, a lot of different things like that. Now these peripherals are going to vary greatly from manufacturer to manufacturer, so it's important to consider which ones are most important to you and consider that in your computer package. So if you listen to a lot of music, the speakers are going to become very important to you. If you do a lot of typing or printing, the, the keyboard or printer is going to become very important to you. So consider the quality of these peripherals within your computer package. 
Now also, be prepared to buy extra peripherals, things like printer cables or scanners or webcams, things that you might want that your computer might not come standard with. And be sure to include the price of these peripherals into the price of your computer so that when you get to the register, you're not shocked by the price. So with peripherals, consider what's important to you and consider any extra peripherals you might have to buy. All right, well, it's my job to talk to you guys about support, which is actually kind of a difficult job because support options are changing so frequently. In fact, I remember a couple years ago, Dell was known, world-renowned for their customer support, and now everyone talks about how horrible it is. HP's had the exact opposite arc. So it's a little bit difficult to advise you on which support option or which support manufacturer is going to provide the best option, because by the time, if you buy a computer now, by the time you need to use that support option 12 to 18 months from now, their support option might have completely evaporated. So in general, I'll just tell you a couple things. The first is that most support options usually aren't that helpful. Basically, it'll go something like this. For the next year, if your computer breaks and you can prove absolutely that it was the manufacturer's fault, not yours, they will supply you with a new computer, but it'll take four to six weeks to get there, and it'll arrive with all of your personal information erased off of it. Not too helpful. So if you need a support option that's going to be better than that, if you can't go four to six weeks without your computer, if your computer is vital to your business, you might want to think about getting a better support option. Nearly all of the manufacturers offer them, you just need to inquire about it. And in fact, they're usually going to try to sell you on it anyway, so you may not even need to inquire about it. But just something to keep in mind, make sure if you need on-site support, make sure it's included in your support option. If you, make sure you understand what the turnaround time is going to be on your support option. And most importantly, make sure that when it comes time and there's something that goes wrong with your computer, you know how to get somebody on the phone and get your problem solved. Alright, now that you guys are ready to buy your computer, there's really two ways to buy it. First one would be to buy in store, and the second one would be to buy online. Now when you're buying in store, typically you get a little more assistance from a salesperson. You get to see the model firsthand, and if you ever have support or repair issues, they become a lot easier. However, generally you're going to pay a little bit more in store than you would online. Now when buying online, you do get to save a little bit of money. However, support and repair issues can become much more difficult, and you often don't get to see the product before you actually buy it. So the two cautions that you want to make whenever buying a computer, whether in-store or online, is first, to make sure that you see the model firsthand so you know it's exactly what you want, and second, to review your product, both the distributor and the manufacturer, so that you, can, so that you know it's a reliable computer from a reliable source. Follow those guidelines, and you guys should have the computer that you guys have been dreaming of. All right, well, that concludes our computer buying guide. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed making it. And now we are going to take a look at the upcoming publications for the month of March. So as you guys know, you already received your Superfoods publication the first week of this month, which means that next week is time for your March newsletter. And in this month's newsletter, among other things, we have a nice article on the history of St. Patrick's Day, something I thought would be nice and appropriate. Very appropriate. Uh, then the following week, we will be swinging you guys into the Major League Baseball season with the baseball schedules for your local sports teams. That's right, and then we're going to be concluding March the way we conclude every month, and that is with our March Market Summary. Well, we'd like to thank you guys for watching our podcast as always, but we've had a hard day of work, so we are off to the pubs. Cheers!